Hi everyone. Now we are going to discuss about an important topic called immunity. Yes, the immunity is a term that was derived from a Latin word immunis which means free from burden. So what kind of burden it is? It is the disease causing microorganism. So free from disease causing microorganisms is the meaning of this immunis word. Then how can we define this immunity? So immunity can be defined as the state of resistance exhibited by the host that is uh, animal body either the human body again as to what toxic molecules microorganisms and the foreign cells is going to be termed as termed as immunity so simply the resistance again as the pathogenic agents exhibited by the host is going to be termed as immunity and this immunity can be acquired or it can come by natural that is by birth or during your lifetime you can get this immunity so that's how the immunity is going to be of classifying into two major types one as an innate immunity another one is going to be called as acquired immunity the innate immunity is nothing but the natural immunity that you are going to acquire by birth or from birth but the acquired immunity is also going to be called as adapted immunity which you are going to get this immunity during your lifetime that is after birth you are going to get this immunity okay so that's how the Immunity is mainly classified into two types. One is the innate immunity, which is also called as natural immunity. And the second one is the acquired immunity, which is also called as adaptive immunity. So we will discuss all these things in detail one by one now. So this is the overall classification of enzyme. Then we'll move in detail of these things. So as I told you, this immunity is again of two types, innate and acquired. So the innate immunity is again of three types. One is species, racial and individual. And then coming to the acquired immunity is being classified into two types, actively acquired immunity, passively acquired immunity. And this actively acquired immunity may be uh, acquired either by natural method or by artificial method. In the same manner, the passively acquired immunity can be a natural mode of the thing or uh, it may be an artificial mode. So this is the overall tablet form or the classification of immunity. So the immunity is classified into two types, innate and acquired. The innate is again of three types, species, racial and individual. Acquired is mainly two types, that is actually acquired immunity and passively acquired immunity. And this actually is of either by natural method or by artificial in the same manner the passively acquired immunity may be of a natural method or by artificial so let's uh, first start of discussing the first one is innate immunity so coming to the innate immunity as i already mentioned that innate immunity is also called as natural immunity and it is also going to be called as native immunity or non-specific immunity native so sometimes in your application form you'll have the native place so that means where you born so that is going to be called as nativity isn't it native place in the same manner the innate immunity is the immunity that we are going to get by birth or from birth is going to be called as innate immunity which is also called as native immunity or natural immunity or non-specific immunity so all the living organisms are naturally gift gifted with resistance to certain infection from birth or by birth. So that's a very great thing that by birth genetically we are going to get some sort of uh, immunity and that immunity is going to be called as innate immunity or non-specific immunity or natural immunity. Why I'm repeatedly saying these terms means in the examination instead of the innate immunity you may get these names also. So because of that you are also supposed to learn the other synonyms of this innate immunity. And this natural immunity or innate immunity is going to be present throughout the life. So by birth whatever you are going to get until your death it is going to be with you. So innate immunity is again classified into how many types? Three types. So what are those three types? Species immunity, racial immunity, 
individual immunity. So we are having the three types of uh, immunity under the heading called as innate immunity again. So let's see those three types of immunity that is species, racial and individual. So resistance to infection varies with the species. Yes, obviously we know that. And uh, for example, animals of some species show uniform resistance toward a pathogen. For example, take a pathogen called Bacillus anthrax, which uh, causes a disease called as anthrax disease. It is going to infect the humans and some of the animals like sheep, goat, all the things. But this Bacillus anthrax bacteria cannot infect the chicken. That means these chicken species are going to be resistant to this anthrax disease. In the same manner, we can have some more examples like measles infection. So this occurs to human, but the dogs are resistant to the measles disease. In the same manner, uh, the humans are going to be resistant to plant pathogens. That means the diseases that are going to be acquired by the plants cannot be affecting the humans. So that's how each species is going to have their own resistance again as the uh, some of the pathogens. So that type of the resistance is going to be called as species immunity, which is going to be exhibited by the whole species. Okay. Then come into the racial immunity within the species. Different races exhibit differences in their resistance due to their genetic factors. The best example will take the Africans and the Americans both. The Africans are resistant to malaria, whatever the cause may be, the Africans are resistant to malaria, whereas our uh, others, Americans, Indians, are all going to be prone to this malarial disease. And in the same manner, we can take uh, animals example like uh, the difference between the Algerian sheep and the normal sheep. The Algerian sheep are resistant to uh, this uh, disease called as anthrax disease but the normal sheep other varieties of the sheep are going to be susceptible to the anthrax disease so that's how within the sheep variety uh, that is race we are going to have the two differences okay so such kind of the immunity is called as uh, racial immunity we can take one more example the negroes so negroes are going to be more uh, susceptible to tb than Americans. So, Americans are less susceptible to TB exposure, whereas the Negroes are going to have the more susceptibility to the TB, that is tuberculosis. Okay. So, that's how within the race, if the immunity is going to differ, then that is going to be called as racial immunity. Then the third type is going to be called as individual immunity. So, here different individuals in a race. So, we have seen the species. Within the species, we have seen the races. Within the races, we are going to have the individuals. The different individuals in a race shows or exhibit differences in innate immunity and this type of immunity is going to be referred as individual immunity. Example, some people uh, may have many cold attacks during the winter than do others. So if you uh, compare the two child of the same family or the same parents, they're going to have the different uh, immunity that means uh, one a child is going to have the more attacks of infections or diseases whereas other oftenly it is going, uh, going to be of very resistant so the child of the same parents are going to have the difference so there comes the individual immunity okay so this individual immunity in your race shows or exhibit difference in the innate immunity and this type of immunity is deferred uh, referred to as individual immunity as i told you examples is a common cold attacks then coming to the mechanism so until now we had discussed the types of uh, innate immunity and now uh, what is the mechanism behind this innate immunity we'll discuss so mechanism of innate immunity the innate immunity or natural immunity or non-specific immunity okay so it's going to be of uh, because of many factors such as general barriers physical barriers chemical barriers biological barriers all these barriers we are going to get by natural method that is from birth or by birth we are going to get that's why they are all going to participate in the innate immunity let's see how these general barriers physical barriers or the chemical barriers or the biological barriers are involved in causing the innate immunity the first one is general barriers many direct factors such as nutrition or the physiology or the fever 
age, uh, then hormone influence, all these are going to affect or playing a crucial role in acquiring the non-specific or natural or innate immunity of causing the defense mechanism very strong. How a nutrition is going to affect? The malnutrition generally increases the susceptibility and severity of infections. Yes, if you are having a very healthy diet, you are going to be protected and you are going to get the more immunity generally uh, the elder people says. What is the reason behind? This is the one. If you are having a very good diet of having a well uh, nourished food that is with the uh, well nutritious food obviously the pathogens cannot come inside because of having the more immunity in you so if you are having a malnutrition generally you are susceptible and severity of the infections uh, will be very high then coming to the fever so you may consider that fever is going to be a very negative impact in uh, causing diseases all the things no the fever is going to be one of the indicator of your host body that it is going to tell that something is going wrong in your body and such that it is acting as an indicator okay and you're getting fever only when your body is fighting with the pathogens that enter into your body isn't it that means it is going to uh, participate in the host defense mechanism it's a natural host defense mechanism and the rise in body temperature a condition called as pyrexia following infection is a natural host defense mechanism and the third one is going to be the age so the fetus and old person so obviously the fetus means the newborn and the fetus are going to be handled very carefully and they are not uh, going to be exhibited to many people and to outer atmosphere because of not having the immunity and the old persons also because of lowering of the immune systems obviously they are also going to be more susceptible to the infectious diseases so the age is also going to play a crucial role in exhibiting this innate immunity and then coming to the hormonal influence certain hormonal disorders such as diabetes mellitus uh, this is not a diabetes mellitus is not a disease it's a metabolic disorder that is because of the hormonal influence and then obviously hypothyroidism and then adrenal dysfunctions influence susceptibility to infections if you're having a hormonal influence that is hormones are not going to be properly maintained in your body obviously your metabolic disorders occurs and that leads to the uh, entry of these pathogens and you are more susceptible to infections okay so that's how the nutrition fever age and the hormone influence these are all going to act as a general barriers of the host defense mechanism so then moving to the second type of the barrier so obviously is the physical barrier so we had seen the general barriers then we are moving to the physical barriers that is uh, related to your body so in this physical barriers, the main two barriers are the skin and the mucous membrane. So skin, obviously, you know, the outer part of your body, the skin and the internal, the moist layer is going to be called as mucous membrane. And these two important physical components are going to be called as mechanical barriers also. And these are the first line defense mechanism against parasitic organisms entry into the host. So if your skin is intact and very healthy, no pathogen will enter into your body. But if you are having any cut or anything, so that will be the entry for the pathogens to get into the body. So you should be of, uh, very careful without having any wounds, cuts on your skin because that makes the entry of the pathogens or parasitic organisms into your body. Okay. So coming to the skin. The intact skin acts as a very effective physical and chemical barriers to parasitic infection. So I told you. The skin because of its outer thick keratinous layer, mild acidity, isn't it? The pH is little bit uh, mild acidic in condition and relatively dryness. There will be no moisture where it is required for the pathogens to grow. So that will be relatively dryness, then sweat. NaCl will be there obviously that is an inhibitor for the growth of organisms and some sort of a, uh, sebaceous gland secretions are going to 
uh, there which will remove the microbiota that is flora that is present on the skin and slow down or inhibit the growth of organisms so that's how the skin is going to act as a first line defense mechanism again is the parasitic invasion okay then coming to the next type that is mucose membrane the mucose membrane of the respiratory tract digestive and urinogenital systems offer mechanical resistance again as the microorganisms so the epithelium and the mucus secretions of mu mucus membranes form a protective covering and trap many microorganisms and thereby resist their penetration so if uh, you are going to hold any smooth objects you can't hold it for example take a fish so if you want to catch that fish in the water you can't it because the slippery nature is protecting naturally from uh, from its enemies isn't it whether we, we or any other so in the same manner these mucous membranes are also internally covering all our main organs and tissues which are protecting us from the invasion of these uh, pathogenic microorganisms not only that the acidity of the stomach also destroys the microorganisms and mucus of respiratory tract and tears that is our eyes containing tears are all known to be toxic to many bacteria because of having certain enzymes called as lysozyme okay so this is how the physical barriers mainly skin and the mucus membrane are acting as a first line defense mechanism in preventing the parasitic entry that is a pathogens entry into the host so we had seen the general barriers we had seen the physical barriers and then coming to the chemical barriers so here uh, there are certain chemicals you may think of uh, how a human system is having the chemicals yes we are having the biochemicals not chemicals so here chemicals that means biochemicals like interferons hormones your beta lysine fibronectin and some sort of bacterial since which are produced by some bacteria or some of the most important chemical barriers of mammalian host and these are these chemicals are going to protect uh, the host body from different types of uh, pathogens for example take the lysozyme a uh, cleaves bacterial cell wall so which is present in your eyes i told you already and then uh, coming to the interferons these interferons are the natural antiviral agents which are going to protect the cells from the antiviral uh, that is uh, viral infections okay then coming to the third one beta lysine which are produced by uh, platelets of blood and it kills the gram positive bacteria so these are few chemicals which are going to protect the host from the invasion of the pathogens or entry of the pathogens so we had seen the physical barriers then we had seen the general barriers then chemical barriers then we are moving to the biological barriers so here the biological barriers are going to be of mainly two important one or there one is the inflammation another one is a phagocytosis so inflammation the cellular and vascular changes caused by the entry of pathogens so if an entry of the pathogen is occurring by crossing our general barriers physical barriers and the chemical barriers then the biological barriers are going to come into play and what they are doing is they are causing some sort of a changes in the cellular and vascular changes caused by the entry of the pathogens or tissue injury which is going to be called as inflammation so when a pathogen enters see here in the figure when a pathogen enters the microphase will take and it is going to release some sort of a chemicals and that are going to damage our uh, vascular and cellular uh, things and that uh, location is going to have the accumulation of all these uh, uh, substances and causing some sort of a swollen nature which we are calling to call it as inflammation and this it is an important non specific defense re uh, reaction to tissue injury so there it is a uh, getting it localized such that it is not going to spread to the whole body so that's how inflammation is also acting as a biological barrier then coming to the phagocytosis the phagocytosis is a process of cell eating and these phagocytic cells are examples of the monocytes and tissue macrophages and neutrophils so we will discuss about this phagocytosis in another part so just remember the inflammation and the phagocytosis are going to be of the two major biological barriers which are acting a very important role in causing of our net 
immunity that is native immunity or non specific immunity or innate immunity so that's how in this uh, first type of uh, immunity that is innate immunity we had gone through the three types that is species racial individual and then we had gone through the mechanism also okay so that's end with the innate immunity and acquired immunity will be discussed in the next part thank you